Army Mental Tests, compiled and edited by Clarence S. Yelcom and Robert M. Yerkes, published with the authorization of the War Department. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Leon Harvey. Preface During the past few months, the Office of the Surgeon General of the Army and the National Research Council have been besieged with requests for information concerning the methods of psychological examining and for the printed materials used in the United States Army. To meet this demand, it has seemed advisable to prepare this little book which, in addition to the examiner's guide, presents information concerning the results of psychological examining in the army and indications of the possible uses of similar methods in education and industry. The book has been prepared under the editorial direction of majors Clarence S. Yoakum and Robert M. Yerkes, who, in cooperation with other members of the psychological staff of the Surgeon General's Office, selected the various materials and decided about the mode of presentation. The editors are responsible for the material of certain of this chapter and they have indicated the responsibility of others wherever possible. It has been arranged that the royalty from army mental tests shall be paid to the treasurer of the National Research Council for the support of psychological research. The introductions originally printed in the examiner's guide for the Stanford Binet scale and the point scale have been omitted from this volume because of copyright restrictions, but these materials are available in books previously published. A detailed and complete account of the methods and results of psychological examining in the Army is in course of publication in Memoirs of the National Academy of Sciences, Washington. The Editors End of Preface Introduction The human factors in most practical situations have been neglected largely because of our consciousness of ignorance and our inability to control them. Whereas engineers deal constantly with physical problems of quality, capacity, stress and strain, they have tended to think of problems of human conduct and experience either as unsolved or as insoluble. At the same time, there has existed a growing consciousness of the practical significance of these human factors and of the importance of such systematic research as shall extend our knowledge of them and increase our directive power. The great war from which we are now emerging into a civilization in many respects new has already worked marvellous changes in our points of view, our expectations and practical demands. Relatively early in this supreme struggle, it became clear to certain individuals that the proper utilization of manpower, and more particularly of mind or brain power, would assure ultimate victory. The war demanded of us the speedy mobilization of our military machine, and in addition to the organization and training of an immense supplementary armed force, the manufacture of ordnance and munitions of war in well-nigh unimaginable quantities, and construction of ships, motor transports, and of varieties of rolling stock in vast numbers. All this had to be done in the least possible time. Never before in the history of civilization was brain, as contrasted with brawn, so important. Never before the proper placement and utilization of brain power so essential to success. Our War Department, nerved with exceptional risks by the stern necessity for early victory, saw and immediately seized its opportunity to develop various new lines of personal work. Among these is numbered the Psychological Service, Great will be our good fortune if the lesson in human engineering which the war has taught is carried over directly and effectively into our civil institutions and activities. Scarcely had war been declared by our country before the psychologists were brought together in a plan to make their professional knowledge, technique, and experience useful in the emergency. In April 1917, the American Psychological Association appointed numerous committees to study the situation and prepare for action. At the same time, a committee for psychology was organized by the National Research Council. Thus it happened that from the outset, American psychologists acted unitedly, whereas their professional colleagues in France and Great Britain served individually wherever they could discover opportunity. The Committee for Psychology of the National Research Council has continued active over a period of nearly two years. Almost all the psychological contributions which the United States has made to the war are either directly or indirectly due to the efforts or the support of this body the work of which has been carried on through conferences, subcommittees, or military appointees in the Army and the Navy. In order that the psychological examining of the soldier may be seen in its proper setting, the various chiefly significant lines of psychological service will be enumerated and chiefly characterized. 
Under the Adjutant General, the Committee on Classification of Personnel in the Army, which was originally organized by a group of psychologists who were at the time serving as members of the Committee for Psychology of the National Research Council or of Committees of the American Psychological Association for the Furtherance of the Military Service, developed and introduced throughout the Army methods of classifying and assigning enlisted men in accordance with their occupational and educational qualifications, and also methods of rating officers for appointment and promotion. The services of this committee, to the work of which the War Department dedicated nearly a million dollars, ultimately touched and more or less profoundly modified almost every important aspect of military personnel. To the Signal Corps, and subsequently to the Division of Military Aeronautics, psychological service was rendered in connection with measurements of the effects of high altitude and also in the selection and placement of men. Numerous important methods, new or adapted, were introduced in this service by groups of psychologists whose primary concern was improved placement and the proper utilization and protection of the flyer. The Committee for Psychology promoted effectively interest in the measures for the control and improvement of both military and civilian morale. The interest and persistent activity of its members ultimately resulted in the organization of a morale branch within the general staff of the Army. At various times, as many as 25 officers and enlisted men trained in military psychology were engaged in the conduct of practical morale work. For the Division of Military Intelligence, psychological methods were devised or adapted to assist in the selection, placement, and effective training of scouts and observers, and in addition, service of minor importance was rendered in numerous training camps. In response to requests from the Chemical Warfare Service, psychological problems presented by the gas mask were studied and the major recommendations resulting from these investigations were embodied in the latest improved form of mask. The psychological problems, either partially or completely solved for the Navy, are comprehended in the proper selection, placement and training of gunners, listeners and lookouts. Numerous situations were carefully analysed for the Navy, and methods and mechanical devices which have achieved extensive application and appreciation were developed. Within the medical department of the Army, a division of psychology was organized for the administration of mental tests to enlisted men and commissioned officers in accordance with the plans perfected during the summer of 1917. The history of this work will be briefly told as an introduction into the account of methods and results. The chief purpose of the psychological assistance originally offered to the medical department was the prompt elimination of recruits whose grade of intelligence is too low for satisfactory service. It was believed by psychologists assembled in conference that their profession is better prepared technically and by practical experience to measure intelligence than are members of the medical profession and that psychologists, therefore, should be able in the military emergency to render invaluable assistance to medical officers by supplying reliable measures of intelligence which might be used as partial basis for rejection or discharge. Thus, it was thought, the efficiency of the service might be considerably increased and the cost materially diminished. As it happens, the purposes of this service as actually developed differ radically from that originally proposed. Moreover, they serve to identify this work even more closely with the personal work of the Adjutant General's Office and of the General Staff than with anything in the Medical Department of the Army aside from neuropsychiatric work. To meet the prospective need of psychological assistance, a committee of seven experts in practical mental measurement was organized in the summer of 1917 and called together for the preparation or selection of suitable methods. This group of men worked almost continuously for a month, devising, selecting and adapting methods. Another month was spent in thoroughly testing the methods in military stations in order that their value might be definitely established before they should be recommended to the medical department of the army. The results were gratifying that the methods were therefore recommended to the Surgeon General of the Army in August 1917 and properly accepted for official trial. During October and November, they were applied in four cantonments, under conditions that could scarcely have been more unfavorable than the results which led the official medical inspector to formulate the following statements and recommendations. The purposes of psychological testing are a. to aid in segregating the mentally incompetent, b. to classify men according to their mental capacity, c. to assist in selecting competent men for responsible positions. In the opinion of this office, these reports, accompanying recommendation, indicate very definitely that the desiring results have been achieved. The success of this work in a large series of observations, some 5,000 officers and 80,000 men, 
makes it reasonably certain that similar results may be expected if the system be extended to include the entire enlisted and drafted personnel and all newly appointed officers in view of these considerations i recommend that all company officers all candidates for officers training camps and all drafted and enlisted men be required to take the prescribed psychological tests in january nineteen eighteen this new work of the medical department was extended in accordance with the above recommendation placing psychological examining in the medical department naturally caused certain difficulties of administration the confusion of psychological work with neuropsychiatry was one of the first difficulties met the administration of psychological examining by a medical officer increased the work of this officer and at the same time added to his staff a group of psychologists with whose work he was unfamiliar and who were perhaps more interested in establishing their particular examinations than in correlating their work with the work of the medical department notwithstanding these and many other difficulties which the new methods met official inquiry into the results of the examining made in the latter part of november and the early part of december nineteen seventeen indicated that seventy five per cent of the officers who had become even slightly acquainted with the work favoured the continuation of psychological examining the original purpose of the committee in the preparation of methods for intelligence testing were less important than the uses actually made of the results it was the intention of the committee as stated above to prepare an examination that would indicate the drafted men who were too low grade mentally to make satisfactory privates in the army it was desired also to indicate if possible those who were mentally unstable or who might prove incorrigible so far as army discipline was concerned in addition the committee hoped to be able to pick out exceptional types of men who could be used for special tasks that demanded a high degree of intelligence in interesting contrast with these original purposes of mental examining stand the results actually achieved one the assignment of an intelligence rating to every soldier on the basis of systematic examination two the designation and selection of men whose superior intelligence indicates the desirability of advancement or special assignment three the prompt selection and recommendation for development of battalions of men who are so inferior intellectually as to be unsuited for the regular military training four the provision of measurements of mental ability which enable assigning officers to build organizations of uniform mental strength or in accordance with definite specifications concerning intelligence requirements five the selection of men for various types of military duty or for special assignment as for example to military training schools colleges or technical schools six the provision of data for the formation of special training groups within the regiment or battery in order that each man may receive instruction suited to his ability to learn seven the early discovery and recommendation for elimination of men whose intelligence is so inferior that they cannot be used to advantage in any line of military service it is of course unfortunate from the point of view of scientific research that many lines of investigation indicated by these general results could not be carried out the psychological service existed in the army for strictly practical purposes the directors of the service emphasized continually the necessity for rendering immediate assistance in the organization of the army and the setting aside of all investigations which did not further this practical end the results given in the following chapter are therefore based almost entirely on military needs and indicate the success of this service in the army the more strictly scientific aspects of this type of examining can be considered in future studies when the practical aim is less insistent or can more readily be made subservient to scientific standards end of preface and introduction chapter one of army mental tests compiled and edited by clarence s yoakum and robert m yerkes this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recorded by leon harvey army mental tests chapter one making the tests the origin of general intelligence tests is due to the genius of alfred binnett his investigations and early publications gave the stimulus to the development of mental tests for school children he also did pioneer work in the study of the characteristics of the feeble-minded since his early work appeared in nineteen o five the volume of material has been extremely large 
Numerous tests have been used in the schools and in psychological laboratories. Many of these have been standardized and have proved particularly useful in school and community surveys. Noteworthy advances have been made by psychologists in the United States. Three of the most important steps in individual testing are represented by the Goddard revision of the Binet scale, the Eriks Bridges point scale and the Stanford revision of the Binet scale. Whipple's Manual of Mental and Physical Tests conveniently presents the literature of tests and standards for many of them. Group methods of mental testing were foreshadowed by a few studies previous to the development of the army methods. These were scattering and had had no extensive use before 1917. The idea of examining children and others in groups, however, existed, and it was on the basis of these preliminary studies and the work in individual examining that the committee which met at Vernlad felt that it could produce a group examination which would serviceably classify recruits for army purposes. Three or four of the members of this committee had had direct experience with group methods. The committee consisted of R. M. Yerkes, Chairman, W. V. Brigham, Secretary, H. H. Goddard, T. H. Haynes, L. M. Terman, G. M. Whipple, and F. L. Wells. Each of these men brought to the work of the committee a large amount of material which was sifted to produce the group test and individual examining materials of the first examiner's guide. Hundreds of tests already published were also available. The committee drew upon these published tests and upon the materials brought together by the members for the group methods and for the individual methods devised for the army. A complete group test, the work of A. S. Otis of Leland Stanford University, quite similar in form to that finally adopted by the army, was in manuscript. It also was drawn upon in making the army tests. It is not the purpose of this chapter to go into detail concerning the work of the committee in the preparation of the army mental tests, but it does seem worthwhile to call attention to certain principles that underlie the making of general intelligence tests, and to suggest certain cautions in their use. The ease with which the army group tests can be given and scored makes it a dangerous method in the hands of the inexpert. It was not prepared for civilian use, and is applicable only within certain limits to other uses than that for which it was prepared. In order to indicate this limited applicability, we shall quote here the criteria formulated and accepted by the committee before any work on the test was attempted. The test to be devised for army use, the committee believes should, first, be adaptable for group use in the examining of large numbers rapidly. Second, it should have a high degree of validity as a measure of intelligence. Third, the range of intelligence measured by the tests should be wide. That is, the test should be made difficult enough to measure the higher levels of intelligence and at the same time be an adequate measure of the extremely low levels that would probably be found in the army. Fourth, as far as possible, it should be arranged for objectivity of scoring and the elimination of personal judgment concerning correct answers. Thus the results of scoring in one camp would be strictly comparable with those obtained in another. Fifth, the test should be so arranged that the scoring could be done rapidly and with the least chance of error. Also, this arrangement should be so simple that relatively inexpert assistance could be used in scoring the large numbers of papers. Sixth, there must be either different forms or alternative tests of equal difficulty to prevent coaching. Seventh, it was necessary also to obtain clues which would enable examiners to detect malingering in connection with the examination. Eighth, cheating must also be avoided. Ninth, the test must be made as completely independent of schooling and educational advantages as possible. Tenth, the arrangement should be such as to allow a minimum of writing and recording answers. Eleventh, the tests must consist of material which would arouse interest in the subjects. Twelfth, the different tests used should be arranged to yield an accurate measure of intelligence in a reasonably short time. With these criteria in mind, the committee set to work on the materials available to produce what is now known as the Army Mental Test. In the original series, there were 13 different tests. These were rated by the psychologists present on the basis of their validity as measures of intelligence. All other criteria mentioned were also taken into account. These tests were then given to selected groups and the results compared with the criteria laid down. As a result, certain tests were eliminated because they failed to meet the requirements. In connection with each of the tests finally selected, certain additional cautions are to be noted. In general, the battery of tests selected was composed of separate tests, no one of which exceeded a time limit of approximately five minutes. The number of items in each test and the time limits were so fixed that 5% or less in any average group 
would be able to finish the entire series of items in the time allowed. It was deemed advisable to have the directions for each test read aloud by the examiner and to have the subjects follow the reading of the directions. For each test a series of sample items correctly answered was given. In order to prevent coaching and cheating, alternative forms were prepared. Materials were gathered by the committee for ten of these alternative forms, but only five were finally printed. In making the alternative forms of the tests, approximately equal difficulty for the forms was desired. This was obtained by using the principle of random selection in preparing the items for each test. For example, if a test had 40 items and 10 forms were to be made, 400 items of the nature desired in the test were prepared. These were printed on separate slips of paper and shoveled. From this mass of 400 items were drawn the items for each form alternatively. The methods of scoring necessary for speed and accuracy were determined empirically after the first and second trials of the tests. Special methods of selecting the material for the items in each of the tests were used, and specific cautions were observed in the arrangements of the items in each. These need not be discussed here. As an example, however, of the care with which the tests were made, we may cite the procedure used in Test 7, known as the Analogies Test. Here, two words with a specific relation are given together with a third word, which bears that same relation to another word in a group of four words. This word in the group of four bears, as has been stated, the relation to the third word that holds for the first two. However, another word in this group of four words bears a relationship to the third word commonly known as the free association relationship. That is to say, if the third word is spoken to a listener who is asked to give the first word that occurs to him after hearing this word, the chances are high that he would give this second word as the free association word. The peculiar nature and difficulty of the test at once becomes apparent when this method of making it is known. In test 5, the disarranged sentence test, as in certain of the other tests, the chance order of true and false sentences was used. In other words, an equal number of true and false items was selected for any one form of this test. The sequence in which they appeared on the page was determined by tossing a coin. In addition to these special principles in making up the tests, the items were arranged as far as possible in the order of difficulty, the easier ones being placed first and the more difficult ones last. As stated above, the preliminary trials gave the basis for the revision and modification of the tests originally selected. After this revision and modification, ten tests remained. These ten tests were then given to approximately 5,000 men in the regular army and national guard, and in addition to a variety of subjects outside the army. This range of subjects includes inmates of institutions for the feeble-minded, members of officers' training schools and students in colleges and universities. The examination papers, just as the examinees had marked them, were sent to Columbia University, where a statistical group headed by Edward L. Thorndike studied the results of the test to check their validity, reliability, and significance. The technical methods used cannot be described here. Some of the more simple methods and checks, however, may be mentioned. A brief enumeration of these will indicate the laborious nature of the task of standardizing a test. Certainly, the usefulness of a test requires clear formulation and close study of the problem, painstaking fitting of the test to the conditions set, correct and proper, statistical studies of results, and, first and last, skill and originality in devising the form and content of the test itself. At the same time that these statistical investigations were being carried on, the tests were given to other subjects who had previously been examined by established methods of mental testing. Other measures of intelligence such as officers' ratings of soldiers of the National Guard and the regular army were obtained. Where school children or college students were examined, teachers' estimates of intelligence and college or school grades were used. The results of the army intelligence tests were then compared with these other measures of intelligence. In a group of tests, such as the army group examinations, each of which is made up of eight types of test, it is necessary to note the relations between the separate tests. If, for example, the relationship between two of the tests is very high, it is possible that the tests are repetitive and that one of them is unnecessary. On the other hand, an extremely low relationship between one of the tests and the total score might indicate that the test should be omitted because it adds little to the measure of intelligence yielded by the group of tests as a whole. The caution to be observed in this instance, or where a specific testing purpose is in view, is that the test may measure some ability of equal importance with the abilities measured by the other tests of the group. The relation of the group of tests to the independent measure of the trait in question constitutes the specific reason for keeping or rejecting a test which shows a low relationship to the total score.
Other things to be noted in measuring the usefulness of a particular test are the number of zero scores produced by the test, the time allowance, and the method of scoring. It is obvious, for example, that if 50% of the group tested, or even 20%, make zero scores, the test is unsatisfactory as a measure of a wide range of intelligence. It is also important to note whether most of the persons tested are given opportunity to exhibit their maximum ability in a test too short a time allowance may prevent some from reaching items of sufficient difficulty to test their ability. On the other hand, in preparing the army tests it was necessary to limit the time allowance in accordance with the practical situation. In scoring the test certain mathematical precautions are necessary. For instance, the test which offers only two alternatives will yield a high percentage of right scores by chance. To compensate for this, such a test may be scored right minus wrong. In addition, a considerable list of observations necessary in finally checking the validity of the army tests might be given. It was found that on the whole, the ten tests which constituted the examination known as examination A, forms A, B, C, D and E of the official army trial on the 4th of 1917 were fairly satisfactory measures of intelligence. The score distributions for each of the tests were good, that is, there were relatively few zero scores and a small percentage of the subjects could either finish or practically finish the tests in the time allowed. A study of the increase in incorrect answers in the upper range of items in each test also indicated that the tests approximated a measure of actual ability and were not merely testing speed in reading or thinking. There proved to be a regular gradation of the score distributions from the graduate students through the officers training school men, regular and national guard privates, down to the inmates of institutions for the feeble-minded. Comparison of the results of the tests which, with officers' ratings of their own men, showed a satisfactory degree of correspondence. On the whole, the tests graded the men as the officers estimated the value of these same men to the army. Repetition of the tests indicated that they had a fairly high degree of reliability. If a man did his best, the chances were that he would vary ten points or less in a second trial. The statistical results indicated further that for the entire group it was fairly safe to say that the men's true scores were not more than 15 points above or below the ones actually recorded. In this connection, it may be noted that the alpha examination, which is the one given in the examiner's guide included in this volume, shows an even higher reliability. The evidence indicates that the average scores due to accidental circumstances vary. For this examination, not more than 5 points up or down. Comparisons of the results of the tests, with schooling as reported by the person tested indicate that the tests are not merely a measure of schooling or of opportunity to attend school, but are actually a measure of native ability. All five forms of the group examination were used in the pre-official trial of the tests. The differences in forms were so slight as to indicate the success of the random method of selecting items. Form B proved more difficult than the other forms. The order of items was changed as a result of the trial in a few instances. One further question remained. How should the results of widely distributed testing of this sort be interpreted? In this connection, it may be emphasized again that the group examination used in the army was interpreted entirely in terms of military needs. Modifications made in the tests, such as scoring and weighing, were all intended to make it a better measure of ability in the army. This specialization of the group examinations for the army makes them less valuable in other fields. We have indicated above that the range of intelligence measured by the tests included distinctly feeble-minded persons as well as officers and graduate students. The assignment of letter grades to the score distributions was based upon this range. The scores were designated as A, B, C, D and E ratings. This division into five grades or ratings was considered sufficiently fine for the principal army uses. Subdivisions can be introduced to any extent desired. The alpha numerical score ranges from 0 to 212 points. In preparing distribution tables, scatter tables, and in all statistical calculations, five and ten point groups or classes are used. For example, all scores are 55 to 59 points or 70 to 79 points inclusive form one group. Officers training school candidates and graduate students made as a rule A and B scores. Clerical assistants and men in the regular army who could handle the paperwork usually made grades in upper C or B. The average private scored C. Men who reported themselves as labourers fell in grade D, and privates who belonged to service organisations or who were relatively ineffective in the army, or men who were inmates of institutions for the feeble-minded, made scores in low D or E. The general intelligence test for literates covering a wide range of ability was prepared for its official trial in the manner described above. The need for haste in its construction made it important that a thorough study of the test in actual camp conditions be undertaken. This trial was made in four National Army cantonments, in the fall of 1917. 
Approximately 80,000 men were tested in this official trial of the methods. About 7,000 college, high school and elementary school students were also tested in order to check the army results. All of the data available from the official trial were then subjected to statistical treatment as a basis for revision of the tests. Psychologists from the camps and members of the original committee spent over two months in the study of results and in the revision of methods. From this work and the preliminary trial that followed the revision, the present methods were obtained. The group examination beta was prepared to enable examiners to make a rapid survey of the 30% who either could not read English or read it so slowly that they could not do themselves justice in the test for literates. The Stanford Binet and the Point Scale were adapted for army use at this time and the individual examination for foreigners and illiterates was prepared. The validity of the tests as measures of intelligence was checked against every available criterion, including officer ratings of men, army rank as an outcome of survival of the fittest, other kinds of intelligence scales, professional success, and ability to learn as evidenced by school standing. Not only has the scale as a whole been thus checked up, but also every one of the separate parts making up the scale. The correlations with other criteria of known validity were almost invariably high. The influence of literacy, repetition of the test, the physical condition of the examinee, and the personal equation of the examiner have all been carefully considered. The development of the beta test and of the performance test for the examination of the foreign speaking and illiterate presented special problems. The use of demonstration charts and pantomime to convey the instructions to the person being examined proves successful. The new method of test in the beta, using geometrical designs, mutilated pictures, etc., required different principles in its construction. The individual performance tests also involved additional and peculiar standards of construction and evaluation. The important purpose of these supplementary tests was, of course, to give to those handicapped by language difficulties a real opportunity to show their ability. In addition, two definite aims were planned in the use of all forms of testing. First, to point out the feeble-minded and those incapable of military service because of mental deficiency, and second, to find those of unusual or special ability. The arrangement of each test, in both group and individual examinations, was therefore checked against the scores of men in institutions for the feeble-minded. If no score had meant low mentality, the first task would have been solved. But we have shown that literacy was an important factor in the alpha test. The beta test practically eliminated this factor, and was thus a step further in selecting those of low intelligence. To prove conclusively that a man was weak-minded and not merely indifferent or malingering, the performance test was added. The individual examinations as finally used in the army were, therefore, primarily checks on the group examinations. No person was reported as feeble-minded until a detailed individual psychological examination had been made. Many cases of mental disorder were discovered and referred to the psychiatrist for examination. Disciplinary cases referred to the psychologist were always given individual examinations, as were referred cases of men having difficulty with drill or those who failed to improve in the YMCA schools and elsewhere. A detailed statement of how these tests are made is impractical here. Most of the methods used in the Army and given in the Examiner's Guide are described in journals and in the literature of mental tests. The results of their use are indicated by the numbers of examinations made and by the totals of low-grade cases found. The instructions for giving the tests are perhaps more essential in individual examination than they are in the group examinations. Again, the detailed cautions have been presented in the literature of mental tests and need not be repeated at this point. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 of Army Mental Tests by Clarence Yalcombe and Robert Yerkes This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Leon Harvey Chapter 2 Methods and Results After a preliminary trial in four continents, psychological examining was extended by the War Department to the entire Army, excepting only field and general officers. To supply the requisite personnel, a school for training in military psychology was established in the Medical Officers Training Camp, Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. Approximately 100 officers and more than 300 enlisted men received training at this special school. On November 11th, 1918, the psychological personnel consisted of about 120 officers and 350 enlisted men. Over 500 additional clerks were used in the examining service in the 35 different camps 
in which psychological examining had been established the army intelligence examination had been given to one million seven hundred twenty six thousand nine hundred and sixty six men of these forty one thousand were officers approximately eighty three thousand individual examinations had been given over seven thousand eight hundred men had been recommended for immediate discharge ten thousand and fourteen had been recommended for labor battalions or other service organizations nine thousand four hundred and eighty seven had been recommended for development battalions for further observation and preliminary training nearly thirty per cent of the one million five hundred and fifty six thousand and eleven men for whom statistics are available were found to be unable to read and understand newspapers and write letters home and were given a special examination prepared for literates the general classification of the men proceeded as rapidly as they reported to camp men qualified to be non-commissioned officers and candidate officers on the basis of satisfactory intelligence scores were pointed out within forty-eight hours of their arrival by this time the general usefulness of psychological examining was no longer seriously questioned and it had become necessary for the psychologists of a camp to emphasize continually that the methods were intended as a measure of only one of the essential qualities of a soldier a few quotations from the statements of officers will indicate their general attitude and typical ways in which the results were used in training men and in selecting candidates for the officers training schools officers and men should be given a psychological examination as a matter of routine the results of the psychological examinations are fully borne out by actual observation of the abilities and the capacity of various officers in the performance of duties assigned to them i do not mean by this that the tests are an absolute gauge but i do mean that they are an absolute guide and that given the practical tests we are enabled to arrive at the best possible determination of ability to meet the requirements of the service the subject of psychology in its relation to military efficiency is an entirely new one and the war college division approached it with a good deal of doubt as to its value a very thorough study of the report submitted however has firmly convinced it that this examination will be of great value in determining the possibilities of newly drafted men and all candidates for officers training camps at first due to the innate conservatism of line and even of medical officers his the psychological examiner's task was a rather uphill one but now due to his own energy and tact and to the thoroughness and honesty of his work practically all officers have been convinced of its practical value and unique assistance in rating sorting and disposing of the diverse kinds of men as well as officers who pass through such a camp i consider such an expert and his speciality among the most useful aids in the scientific and non-wasteful utilization of manpower i consider the psychological service of a special value in this camp which is devoted to the elementary training of recruits for field artillery the forms filled out by applicants were arranged in the order of the psychological mark and all applicants of class a were gone over with the view of finding out if there were any who because of a specific statement of the company commander should be thrown out without further examination there were almost none of these the same thing was done with all of class b the class c applicants were then gone over with the view of seeing if there were any who notwithstanding their low psychological mark should nevertheless be considered because of the specific statement of the company commander there were very few of these the psychological examination of these men has been a great aid to me as commanding officer of the school not only in the final summing up of their qualifications for an officer's commission but also during their stay at the school in working out the reasons for their apparent efficiency it is recommended that in the future all candidates for officers training schools be sent first before a psychological board and that the results of this examination be a determining factor in their entrance to the school i consider it highly desirable to use psychological ratings in the selection of all applicants for the officers training camp it is doubtful whether applicants should be admitted to the school who have not according to the psychological examinations made a score equivalent to high average intelligence c plus intelligence ratings should receive primary consideration and all other important factors secondary consideration in very exceptional and rare cases it is possible that this order of consideration may be reversed we find the psychological ratings more reliable than any other information above all else an officer should have a high degree of intelligence and when this is combined with an excellent physical record leadership etc we have the type desired for a commissioned officer the board of officers charged with the duties of examining candidates for the officers training school regard the psychological ratings 
as the one best factor of the various factors which determine a candidate's qualification for entry to said school concurring in the opinion of the commanding officer of the training school this camp the above board of officers hold that all candidates should have not less than a high average intelligence rating c plus to qualify for entry to training schools except in rare and exceptional cases in which other factors are extremely favorable it is the unanimous opinion of this board that the intelligence rating is the most reliable index in that a quantitative statement is available and in that rough observation is effectively checked the psychological rating is therefore considered of primary importance from my experience in different camps i am of the opinion that enlisted men who rate below the a and b classes by the psychological test should not be considered as candidates for the officers training schools all enlisted men sent to officers training schools from this camp are inspected as to their military appearance and bearing and their knowledge of the elementary duties of a soldier they are given a physical examination a mental examination and the psychological examination if they do not rate a or b in this examination they are rejected the methods originally prepared for use in the army were subjected to repeated revisions in the light of results for increase in reliability and military value the procedure finally adopted and used throughout the army consists of two chief types of examination the group examination and the individual examination the former was necessitated by the demand for speed of examination and report the latter by the desire for reliability and fairness to the individual of group examinations there are two varieties used in this army the one for men who can read and write english fairly well literates known as alpha the other for men who are unable to read and write english well illiterates known as beta the individual examination includes three varieties developed as were the group examinations to suit different types of subjects they are one the point scale examination two the stanford binet examination and three the performance scale examination both the point scale and the stanford binet are used in the army in three forms a as complete scales for literate subjects b as abbreviated scales for literate subjects c as specially adapted scales for relatively illiterate subjects these two types of examination the point scale and stanford binet are used as alternates the examiner selecting in accordance with his preference for the examination of foreign and illiterate men who can neither read nor write english and of whom many speak and understand it very imperfectly the special form of examination known as a performance scale has been developed and is effectively used examination alpha consists of eight tests described by title as follows test one directions or commands test test two arithmetical problems test three practical judgment test four synonym antonym test five disarranged sentences test six number series completion test seven analogies test eight general information of this method men are examined in groups as large as five hundred every man is supplied with a pencil and an examination blank he then under military discipline follows directions to the best of his ability the examination requires approximately fifty minutes and demands almost no writing since responses are indicated by underscoring crossing out or checking the examination papers are quickly scored by means of stencils and mental ratings recorded for prompt report to avoid within reasonable limits the risk of coaching several duplicate forms of this examination have been made available each test of examination alpha consists of a number of parts arranged in order of difficulty from low to high it is therefore possible for low-grade subjects to make a start on each test and at the same time practically impossible for highly intelligent subjects to complete the test within the time allowed the tests are varied in character and undoubtedly sample the most important types of intellectual process examination beta consists of seven tests listed thus by titles test one maze test test two cube analysis test three x o series test four digit symbol test five number checking test six pictorial completion test seven geometrical construction this examination which was devised after alpha had been put into use to meet an unexpected demand for the examination of subjects of low literacy and extreme unfamiliarity with english is in effect although not in strictness test for test alpha translated into pictorial form so that pantomime and demonstration may be substituted for written and oral directions beta may be given successfully to men who neither speak nor understand english 
examinations alpha and beta are so constructed and administered as to minimize the handicap of men who because of foreign birth or lack of education are little skilled in the use of english these group examinations were originally intended and are now definitely known to measure native intellectual ability they are to some extent influenced by educational acquirement but in the main the soldier's inborn intelligence and not the accidents of environment determine his mental rating or grade in the army like alpha examination beta requires about fifty minutes and the papers are scored by the use of stencils both alpha and beta yield numerical scores or intelligence scores which for practical military purposes are translated into letter grades the several letter grades used in the army with their score equivalents and appropriate definitions are presented in the following table the table is displayed on the page with four columns intelligence grade the definition the score alpha and the score beta e grade was reserved for men who are recommended for rejection discharge developmental battalion or service organization all men deemed satisfactory for regular military duty were graded d minus or higher neither the point scale nor the stanford binet scale need be described in detail since both are widely known and adequate descriptions are available the military adaptations of the scales may prove useful in various civil situations but because of copyright restrictions they are not reproduced in this volume the several procedures of individual examining have played a most important role in the military service and the examiner who lacks familiarity with them and reasonable skill in their application and the interpretation of their results is ill prepared for psychological military service the army performance scale cannot be adequately described by a reference since it is in the main a product of military experience and effort it consists of ten tests the titles of which fairly well suggest their nature test one the ship test test two mannequin and feature profile test three cube imitation test four cube construction test five form board test six designs test seven digit symbol test eight maze test nine picture arrangement test ten picture completion as in the case of group examinations alpha and beta so also in that of the several forms of individual examination numerical scores for subjects were secured which could be translated into letter grades the general procedure of examining which was developed to meet military requirements is briefly describable as follows a group of draftees the size of which is determined by the seating capacity of examining room it varies from one hundred to five hundred men is reported to the psychological examining building for mental test the first essential step is the segregation of the illiterates this is accomplished by having all men who cannot read and write their own letters and those who have not proceeded beyond the fifth grade in school step out of the original group the remaining men are sent to the alpha room naturally among them are likely to be several who will subsequently have to take the beta examination the illiterates are sent directly to the beta room men who fail in alpha are sent to beta in order that injustice by reason of relative unfamiliarity with english may be avoided men who fail in beta are referred for individual examination by means of what may appear to be the most suitable and altogether appropriate procedure among the varied methods available this reference for careful individual examination is yet another attempt to avoid injustice either by reason of linguistic handicap or accidents incident to group examining it is to be emphasized that the interests of the individual who is either in the army or in process of being accepted for military service are safeguarded by a system of three types of examination which serve as the sieves every soldier is required to take at least one examination men who are of low mentality or who are of foreign birth or for other reasons illiterate and those who exhibit marked peculiarities of behavior may be required to take either two or three examinations before the psychological report can be completed despite the necessity for haste in which some instances compelled small examining staffs to grade and report on as many as two thousand soldiers per day the army mental test work has been done with an average thoroughness and degree of reliability which would do credit to any school system or other civil institution when psychological examining was originally accepted by the medical department for officer trial there was extreme and widely prevalent scepticism even among psychologists themselves concerning the reliability of the measurements of intelligence which could be secured and still more concerning their practical value to the army the measures of reliability or validity of army methods of mental measurement 
which have been obtained during the past eighteen months are therefore quite as important as a partial basis for a safe opinion concerning the significance of this service as are the evidences of practical value which have accumulated effort will be made to present as adequately as is possible within brief compass samples of both kinds of measure first reliability may be considered for examination alpha the probable error of the score is approximately five points this is one-eighth of the standard deviation of the score distribution for unselected soldiers the reliability coefficient is approximately point nine five alpha yields correlations with other measures of intelligence as follows one with officers ratings of their men point five zero to point seven zero two with stanford binet measurements point eight zero to point nine zero three with Trebu B and C completion test combined, 0.72. 4. With examination beta, 0 0.80. 5. With composite of alpha, beta and Stanford Binet, 0.94. 6. In the case of school children, alpha measurements correlate with A. Teacher's ratings, 0.67 to 0.82. B. School marks, 0.50 to 0 0.60. C. School grade location of 13 and 14 year old pupils, 0.75 to 0.91. D. Age of pupils, 0.83. Footnote. Chiefly because the relatively narrow age range, the correlation of alpha score with the age of recruits is practically zero. Results for examination beta correlate with alpha, 0 0.80, with Stanford Binet, 0.73, and composite of alpha, beta, and Stanford Binet, 0.91. Results of repetition of the Stanford Binet examination in case of school children correlate 0.94 to 0.97. The abbreviated form of the Stanford Binet scale consisting of only two sets per year, extensively used in the Army, correlates 0.92 with results for the entire scale. Reliability coefficients for results of point scale examination closely approximate those for the Stanford Binet scale. The several tests of the performance scale taken separately correlate with the Stanford Binet measurements 0.48 to 0.78. Five of the ten tests of the performance scale yield a total score which correlates 0.84 with Stanford Binet results. It is definitely established that examination alpha measures literate men very satisfactorily, considering the time required for mental ages above 11 years. Estimation beta is somewhat less accurate than alpha for the higher ranges of intelligence. There are convincing evidences that some men are not fairly measured by either alpha or beta and that the provision of careful individual examination for men who fail in beta is therefore of extreme importance. There follows a brief statistical summary of results of individual examining in the army and a discussion of military applications and evidence of practical value. Between April 27 and November 30, 1918, 7,749 men, 0.5%, were reported for discharge by psychological examiners because of mental inferiority. The recommendations for assignment to labor battalions because of low-grade intelligence number 9,871, 0.6%. For assignment to development battalions in order that they might be more carefully observed and given preliminary training to discover, if possible, ways of using them in the army, 9,432 men, 0.6% were recommended. During this same six-month interval, there were reported 4,744 men with mental age below seven years, 7,762 between seven and eight years, 14,566 between eight and nine years, 18,581 between nine and ten years. This gives a total of 45,653 men under ten years mental age. It is extremely improbable and many of these individuals were worth what it cost the government to maintain, equip and train them for military service. The psychological rating of a man was reported promptly to the personal adjutant and to the company commander. In addition, all low-grade cases and men exhibiting peculiarities of behaviour were reported also to the medical officer. The mental rating was thus made available for use in connection with rejection or discharge, the assignment of men to organisations and their selection for special tasks, the mental ratings were used in various ways by commanding officers to increase the efficiency of training and to strengthen organizations by improved placement. It was repeatedly stated and emphasized by psychological examiners that a man's value to the service should not be judged by his intelligence alone, but that instead 
temperamental characteristics, reliability, ability to lead, and to carry on, under varied conditions, should be taken into account. Even after the feasibility of securing a fairly reliable measure of every soldier's intelligence or mental alertness had been demonstrated, it remained uncertain whether these measurements would correlate positively with military value to a significant degree to render them useful. Data which have become available during the past year settle this question definitely by indicating a relatively high correlation between officer judgments of military value and the intelligence rating. A description and explanation of the letter ratings used by psychological examiners were handed to each officer who received the scores of recruits. Directions for the use of the ratings were also supplied. Quotations from Army Mental Tests will indicate the nature of these explanations and directions. In explanation of letter ratings, the rating a man earns furnishes a fairly reliable index of his ability to learn, to think quickly and accurately, to analyse a situation, to maintain a state of mental alertness, and to comprehend and follow instructions. The score is little influenced by schooling. Some of the highest records have been made by men who had not completed the eighth grade. The meaning of the letter ratings is as follows. A equals very superior intelligence. This grade is ordinarily earned by only 4 or 5% of the draft quota. The A group is composed of men of marked intellectuality. A men are of high officer type when they are also endowed with leadership and other necessary qualities. B equals superior intelligence. B intelligence is superior but less exceptional than that represented by A. The rating B is obtained by 8 to 10 soldiers out of 100. The group contains many men of the commissioned officer type and a large amount of non-commissioned officer material. C plus equals high average intelligence. This group includes 15 to 18 percent of all soldiers and contains a large amount of non-commissioned officer material, with occasionally a man whose leadership and power to command fit him for commissioned rank. C equals average intelligence. It includes about 25 percent of soldiers. Excellent private type with a certain amount of fair non-commissioned officer material. C- minus equals low average intelligence. This group includes about 20%. Although below average in intelligence, C- minus men are usually good privates and satisfactory in work of a routine nature. D equals inferior intelligence. It includes about 15% of soldiers. D men are likely to be fair soldiers, but they are usually slow in learning and rarely go above the rank of private. They are short on initiative and so require more than the usual amount of supervision. Many of them are illiterate or foreign. D minus and E. Very inferior intelligence. This group is divided into two classes. 1. D minus. Men who are very inferior in intelligence but are considered fit for regular service. And 2. E men those whose mental inferiority justifies their recommendation for development of battalion, special service organization, rejection or discharge. The majority of D- and E men are below 10 years in mental age. The immense contrast between A and D- intelligence is shown by the fact that men of A intelligence have the ability to make a superior record in college or university, while D- men are of such an inferior mentality that they are rarely able to go beyond the third or fourth grade of the elementary school however long they attend. In fact, many D- and E men are of the moron grade of feeble-mindedness. B intelligence is capable of making an average record in college. C plus intelligence cannot do so well, while mentality of the C grade is rarely capable of finishing a high school course. Concerning directions for the use of intelligence ratings. In using the intelligence ratings, the following points should be borne in mind. 1. The mental tests are not intended to replace other methods of judging a man's value to the service. It would be a mistake to assume that they tell us unfailably what kind of soldier a man will make. They merely help to do this by measuring one important element in a soldier's equipment, namely intelligence. They do not measure loyalty, bravery, power to command, or the emotional traits that make a man carry on. However, in the long run these qualities are far more likely to be found in men of superior intelligence than in men who are intellectually inferior. Intelligence is perhaps the most important single factor in military efficiency, apart from physical fitness. 2. Commissioned officer material is found chiefly in the A and B groups. Although, of course, not all high school men have other qualifications necessary for officers, 
men below c plus should not be accepted as students in officers training schools unless they possess exceptional power of leadership and ability to command three since more than one-fourth of enlisted men rate as high as c plus there is rarely justification for going below this grade in choosing non-commissioned officers this is especially important in view of the likelihood of promotion from non-commissioned to commissioned rank even apart from consideration of promotion it is desirable to avoid the appointment of mentally inferior men below c as non-commissioned officers several careful studies have shown that c minus and d sergeants and corporals are extremely likely to be found unsatisfactory the fact that a few make good does not justify the risk taken in their appointment four men below c plus are rarely equal to complicated paperwork five in selecting men for tasks of special responsibility the preference should be given to those of highest intelligence rating who also have the other necessary qualifications if they make good they should be kept on the work or promoted if they fail they should be replaced by men next on the list to aid in selecting men for occupational assignment extensive data have been gathered on the range of intelligence scores found in various occupations this material has been placed in the hands of personal officers for use in making assignments it is suggested that those men who have an intelligence rating above the average in an occupation should be the first to be assigned to meet the needs of, for that occupation after that men with lower ratings should be considered six in making assignments from the depot brigade to permanent organizations it is important to give each unit its proportion of superior average and inferior men if this is left to chance there will inevitably be weak links in the army chain exception to this rule should be made in favor of certain arms of the service which require more than the ordinary number of mentally superior men for example signal corps machine gun field artillery and engineers these organizations ordinarily have about twice the usual proportion of a and b men and very much less than the usual proportion of d and d minus men the first two columns in the following table illustrate the distribution of intelligence ratings typical of infantry regiments and also the extreme difference in the mental strength of organizations which are built up without regard to intelligence ratings the last column to the right shows the balanced distribution of intellectual strength which might have been obtained in each of these two regiments a table is displayed on the page with five columns descending weighted with intelligence rating interpretation two actual distributions first regiment and second regiment and a balanced distribution unless intelligence is wisely distributed certain regiments and companies will take training much more slowly than others and thus delay the program for the whole organization seven d and d minus men are rarely suited for tasks which require special skill resourcefulness or sustained alertness it is also unsafe to expect d d minus or e men to read or understand written directions eight only high score men should be selected for tasks which require quick learning or rapid adjustments nine it should not be supposed that men who receive the same mental rating are necessarily of equal military worth a man's value to the service should not be judged by his intelligence alone ten the intelligence rating is one of the most important aids in the rapid sorting of the masses of men in the depot brigade in no previous war has so much depended on the prompt and complete utilization of the mental ability of the individual soldier it is important therefore that the psychological ratings be regularly used as an aid in the selection adjustment and classification of men the various figures which follow are presented not as a summary of the results of psychological examining in the army but instead as samples of these results the chief value of which is to indicate their principal relationships and practical values the sample distribution curves of figure one indicate the value of mental ratings for the identification and segregation of differences moreover within the officer group itself significant differences appear for different branches of the service the relation of success or failure in officers training schools to intelligence ratings is exhibited by figure two in which it is to be noted that elimination through failure in the school increases rapidly for ratings below c plus of men rating above c plus eight point six five per cent were eliminated of those below c plus fifty eight point twenty seven per cent 
The data for this figure were obtained from the three schools with a total enrollment of 1,375 men. Similarly, figure 3 shows the relation between success or failure in non-commissioned officers training schools and intelligence ratings. The elimination increases rapidly for grades below C+. Of men rating above C, only 18.49% were eliminated. Of men rating below C, 62.41%. The results presented in this figure were obtained from four schools with a total enrollment of 1,458 men. Increasingly extensive and effective use has been made of the psychological rating as an aid in the selection of men for officers' training schools, non commission officers' training schools, other lines of training or service which require special ability. It has been convincingly demonstrated that the data of psychological examinations can readily be used to diminish the necessary elimination during training and thus to increase the efficiency of the schools. The extreme difference in the intellectual status of army groups are fairly indicated by figure 4, which presents the data for groups whose military importance cannot readily be overemphasized. Roughly, the groups in the upper half of the figure are important because of their relatively high intelligence and the mental initiative demanded for success, whereas those in the lower half of the figure are important because of poor intelligence and relative inefficiency or uselessness. Figure 4 is displayed on the page. Proportion of low, average and high grade men in typical groups. These results suggest that if military efficiency alone were to be considered, the army would undoubtedly gain largely by rejecting all D- and E men. This procedure would greatly lessen the group of disciplinary causes so troublesome and costly in the military organization, and also the group which in the figure is distributed among ten poorest privates, men of low military value and unteachable men. Numerous varieties of evidence indicate the extreme military importance of the prompt recognition of the low-grade men. The percentages of men ranking below the average in psychological examinations are notably large for the disciplinary group. Men having difficulties in drill, men reported as unteachable, and men designated by their officers as poorest from the standpoint of military usefulness. The comparison of Negro with white recruits reveals markedly lower mental ratings for the former. A further significant difference based on geographical classification has been noted in that the northern Negroes are mentally much superior to the southern. The relation between officers' judgments of the value of their men and intelligence ratings is exhibited in somewhat different ways by figures 5 to 7. Thus the median scores for five groups of privates arranged in order of military value from very poor to best are presented in the figure 5. The total number of individuals in the group is 374. The men were selected from 12 different companies, approximately 30 men in each company being ranked by an officer in serial order from best to poorest. The rank order for each company was then correlated by the psychological examiner with the rank order supplied by psychological examination. In 7 of the 12 companies, the correlations ranged from 0.64 to 0.75. The average correlation was 0.536. These correlations are high, considering the large number of factors which may influence a man's value to the service. The median score for the very poor group at figure 5 is 28 points in an examination whose maximal score is 212 points. By contrast with this, the median score of the best group of privates is 99 points. The commanding officers of 10 different organizations representing various arms of the service in a certain camp were asked to designate 1. the most efficient men in their organizations, 2. the men of average ability, and 3. the men so inferior that they are barely able to perform their duties. The officers of these organizations had been with the men from 6 to 12 months and knew them exceptionally well. The total number of men rated was 965, about equally divided among best, average and poorest. After the officers' ratings had been made, the men were given the usual psychological test. Comparison of the test results with officers' ratings showed a. that the average score of the best group was approximately twice as high as the average score of the poorest group. b. That of men testing below C-70% were classed as poorest, and only 4.4% as best. C. That of men testing above C+, 15% were classed as poorest, and 55.5% as best. D. That the man who tests above C+, is about 14 times as likely to be classed as best as a man who tests below C-. E. 
that the percent classed as best in the various groups increased steadily from 0% in D to 57.7% in A, while the percent classed as poorest decreased steadily from 80% in D to 11.5% in A. Figure 5 is displayed on the page. Median intelligence scores by points of groups designated as best, good, fair, poor, and very poor in military value. In an infantry regiment of another camp were 765 men, regulars, who had been with their officers for several months. The company commanders were asked to rate these men as 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 according to practical soldier value, 1 being highest and 5 lowest. The men were then tested with the following results. A. Of 76 men who earned grade A or B, none was rated 5 and only 9 were rated 3 or 4. B. Of 238 D and D- men, only 1 received the rating 1 and only 7 received a rating of 2. C. Psychological ratings and ratings of company commanders were identical in 49.5% of all cases. There was agreement within one step in 88.4% of cases, and disagreement of more than two steps in only 0.7% of cases. Figure 6 exhibits a striking contrast in the intelligence status and distribution of the best and poorest privates. The personal judgment data for this figure were obtained from 60 company commanders who were requested to designate their 10 best and their 10 poorest privates. Of the poorest, 57.5% graded D or D-, minus, less than 3% graded A or B. The result suggests that intelligence is likely to prove the most important single factor in determining a man's value to the military service. In one training camp, excellent opportunity was offered to compare a group of soldiers selected on the basis of low military value with a complete draft quota. In the low value group, there were 147 men. In the complete draft quota, 12,341 men. The distribution of intelligence ratings for these two military groups appear as figure 7, from which it is clear that if all men with intelligence ratings below C- had been eliminated, the low value group would have been reduced by at least half. In a certain training camp, 221 inapt soldiers belonging to a Negro regiment of pioneer infantry were referred by their commanding officer for special psychological examination. Nearly one half, 109, of these men were found to have mental ages of seven years or less. The army nevertheless had been attempting to train these men for military service. In justice to the psychological service, it should be stated that these Negroes had been transferred from camps where there were no psychological examiners. For this reason, they had not been examined before being assigned to an organization for regular training. In another instance, some 306 soldiers from organizations about to be sent overseas were designated by their commanding officers as unfit for foreign service. They were referred for psychological examination, with the result that 90% were discovered to be 10 years or less in mental age, and 80% 9 years or less. It has been discovered that when soldiers are assigned to training units without regard to intelligence, extreme inequalities in the mental strength of companies and regiments appear. This fact is strikingly exhibited by figures 8 and 9, of which the former shows the proportion of high grade and of illiterate or foreign soldiers in the various companies of an infantry regiment. Figure 8 is displayed on the page, inequality of companies in an infantry regiment. The list of companies is displayed across the page in alphabetical order, and the percent rated A or B in columns above, and percent illiterate or foreign in columns below. Compare, for example, the intelligence status of C and E companies. The former happens to have received only 3% of A and B men, along with 38% of illiterates and foreigners. The latter received, by contrast, 29% of high-grade men, with only 9% of men who are, as a rule, difficult to train. It is needless to attempt to emphasize the military importance of this condition. The tasks of the officers of these two companies are wholly incomparable, but more serious even than the inequalities in response to training are the risks of weak points in the army chain as a result of such random or unintelligent assignment. Naturally enough, the officers of the army were quick to appreciate the disadvantages of a method of assigning recruits which permits such extreme inequalities in mental strength to appear and persist. They promptly demanded the reorganization of improperly constituted units an assignment in accordance with intelligence specification so that the danger of weakness in the chain and of extreme difference in rapidity of training should be minimized. Figure 9 is also displayed on the page, Inequality of Regiments. 
that serious inequalities existed in regiments as well as in smaller units prior to assignment on the basis of intelligence is proved by the data in figure nine which pictures the differences found in four infantry regiments and three regiments of field artillery following the demonstration of the value of psychological ratings in connection with the assignment the experiment was tried in various training camps of classifying men in accordance with intelligence for facilitation of training to this end a and b grade men were placed in one training group c plus c and c minus men in another and d and d minus men in a third the three groups were then instructed and drilled in accordance with their ability to learn thus delay in the progress of high grade men was avoided and the low grade soldiers were given special instruction in accordance with their needs and capacity the marked differences in the mental strength of groups in different officers training schools as shown by figure ten for the eighteen schools of this figure the proportion of a grades varies from sixteen point six per cent to sixty two point four per cent the proportion of a and b grades combined from forty eight point nine per cent to ninety three point six per cent and the proportion of grades below c plus from zero to seventeen point nine per cent since it is unusual for a man with an intelligence rating below c plus to make a satisfactory record in an officer's training school it is clear that the pedagogic treatment of these several student groups should differ more or less radically and that elimination must vary through a wide range if the several schools are to graduate equally satisfactory groups of officers figure ten is displayed on the page inequality of mental strength in eighteen officers training schools fourth series total enrollment nine thousand two hundred and forty far more important than the contrast in student officers training groups noted above are the differences in the intelligence status of officers in different arms of the service as revealed by psychological examining figure eleven exhibits the data obtained for several groups the variations are extreme and seemingly unrelated to the requirements of the service medical officers for example show a relatively large percentage of men rating c plus or below whereas engineering officers head the list with relatively few men whose intelligence is rated below b there is no obvious reason for assuming that the military duties of an engineer demand higher intelligence or more mental alertness than do those of the medical officer since it is improbable that any arm of the service possesses more intelligence than can be used to advantage the necessary inference that is certain arms would benefit by the elimination of low-grade men and the substitution of officers with better intellectual ability table one summarizes the general classification obtained by the psychological examination the column headed white draft is a random sampling of the one million seven hundred twenty six thousand men examined figure eleven is displayed on the page intelligence of officers in different arms of the military service the graph lists a series of professions with engineers artillery sanitary corps field signal battalions machine gun battalions infantry quartermaster corps medical corps dental corps veterinary corps they are also graded with below b b and a by percentiles the column headed recruits is a small group brought out by the holler of sorting no longer the depot brigade but not yet assigned to regular organizations privates designates a random selection of men reported as being in named organizations such as infantry artillery machine gun etc the other columns are self-explanatory they do not represent exactly the same method of sampling but are clearly typical of the differences revealed by other methods of sampling described and represented in the figures above the group headed surgeons includes all classes of surgeons medical officers are included in the percentiles given with the medical officers omitted practically no correlation with rank appears the medical officers taken alone show a high correlation with rank it has been suggested that this represents the professional grading that has already been made in civil life figure twelve presents the percentages of table one in graphic form the different grades and ranks are shown according to the letter grade classification given in the table the dividing line is placed between c plus and b further evidence indicates that the tests prophecy success in field operations when the classification made by them is compared with total value to the service after a year of training and actual fighting the correspondence is still positive and an average statistical prophecy of attainment exists the degree of practical success in the application of such a measure may well be considered one of the major achievements of the war end of chapter two